Our goal is to explain to you in simple terms what weight and balance is, why it is so critically important for you to become comfortable understanding it, when weight and balance has to be calculated and documented, and how to prepare your documents for completing your home-built project. Obtaining the accurate weight of your empty home built is the first major task involved with weight and balance. Often the literature that accompanies your home built kit or plans will publish an empty weight, but you cannot use this figure. No one builds a plane exactly the same. Equipment list is a document that you create, it can be of any format, that clearly states what equipment is included with the plane so as to be included in the empty weight calculation. What are our options in getting your home built weight? Where do you get three scales that can handle the weight of your aircraft? You could purchase or try to rent aircraft scales made for this purpose. These are quite expensive. A possible better method is to create a ramp device that allows easy rolling of the aircraft onto the scale. These need to be replicated for each wheel so that the aircraft remains perfectly level when obtaining each weight reading. If a single scale does not have the capacity to weigh a single wheel, two scales can be used by bridging the two scales with a plank and adding the readings from both scales. This effectively doubles the capacity limit of a single scale. As long as the center of gravity is maintained within the allowable range, the aircraft will have adequate longitudinal control and stability. If the center of gravity is too far backwards, the plane may be difficult to recover from a stall as there may be insufficient force from the elevator to bring the nose back down to recover. Calculate the moments in the chart for each arm that was previously recorded. There are two of these, one for each weight location, the main wheels and the tail wheel. Remember, the goal of all of this is to confirm that the center of gravity, while flying the plane with a realistic load, stays within the range allowed by the designer. In this case, 300 to 450 millimeters from the datum and that the total weight of the plane with these loads does not exceed the maximum gross weight of the plane. These types of worksheets really make your life easier by assisting you in calculating and documenting the various weight and balance configurations that will be required by the inspector of your home build. You can easily model your own worksheet after this one if your aircraft designer has not supplied one. Let's study the prominent details of this worksheet before we start our calculations. If the center of gravity is too far forward, then the push from the elevator surfaces would need to be greater to maintain level flight. During takeoff, for example, with too far forward of center of gravity, the elevator might not have sufficient force to rotate the nose up. Or during landing at low speeds, the ability to flare properly would be limited. We have a need to move the center of gravity of our loaded plane forward one and a half inches in order to place it within the allowable range. We have baggage that weighs 75 pounds stored in the rear cargo area. If we are able to move this baggage forward within a safe area of the plane, 
how far forward would it have to be moved to bring the center of gravity of the aircraft forward by one and a half inches? On top is the original formula. On the bottom, we are simply rewriting this equation to make it easy to solve for the unknown value of distance the load moves. The answer is 30 inches. If we can move the 75 pound baggage forward by at least 30 inches, then the center of gravity of the aircraft will move forward by one and a half inches. One of the less exciting parts of performing a weight and balance analysis is doing the math needed for calculating the moments and center of gravity values. The right wheel and the nose wheel. The total empty weight of the aircraft is immediately and automatically calculated and displayed. Next we enter the arms for each of the wheels just like on the paper worksheet. The moments, which if you recall is weight times arm, are also immediately and automatically calculated and displayed. We now add a passenger in the co-pilot seat that weighs 220 pounds. Again, note how the takeoff weight and aircraft center of gravity immediately are updated. Finally, we add 40 pounds of baggage to the aircraft. We now have our final takeoff weight, which is almost to the maximum gross weight of the aircraft, and a center of gravity, which we can confirm is still within the allowable ranges of the aircraft. And a check with our fuel burn box, we see that as all of our fuel burns off, the weight of the aircraft is reduced, but our center of gravity shifts to the very rear limit of our aircraft. 